Today's video is a pretty hot topic that we all deal with from time to time. And when it happens to us, we never want to admit it. So let's jump right in. Are you struggling financially right now? If you are, you're unfortunately in very good company. Did you know that even before the pandemic, eight out of 10 Americans were living paycheck to paycheck? Yes, you're in good company. Unfortunately, this isn't unique to the season that we're in. The season, whether it be pandemic or the Christmas season, the average American struggles financially. Why, you might ask? Too much debt, too much outgo. Whether the debt be on the $1,200 a month worth of car payments that are sitting in the driveway, whether it be a couple maxed out credit cards or too much house, there's a lot of different reasons on why it could be too much. But it doesn't change the fact of too much outgo means you're robbing from your future. That's a scary thing. When eight out of 10 Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, that means we are simply one check away from starting to miss payments. That's scary. And at a time like this, specifically Christmas season, financial obligations and social obligations can just make it even worse. So there's a few things that we can do to help alleviate some of those. Number one, it's understanding there is no shame in financial struggles. Remember, everybody has financial struggles from time to time, and there's no shame in that. Number two, knowing there's nothing wrong with connecting with people in your circle that are willing and more appropriately put, able to help you. I'm not talking write, writing you checks. In most cases, checks won't solve the problem. Financial problems are behavior related. I'm not saying that you're misbehaving with money. That's for you to look at your financials and figure out if you are or aren't. $1,200 worth of car payments, $2,500 house payment, and you make 50 grand a year, probably a good indicator. All of that comes down to why we in America are struggling financially. With the exception of the pandemic, very few people had more than $2,500 in savings. Because of the pandemic, the government issued a sizable amount of money to most Americans. So because of that, our savings rate has su substantially gone up. That is a very good thing. We need to make that a part of our normal lives. If you have more savings and less debt, you won't feel pressured right now. The next part is understanding the priorities in order to get things paid. Number one, it's food. Don't buy anything before you buy food. I'm not saying go spend 1200 bucks a month on food either. Keep it, keep it reasonable with your family size, but you have to have food on the table. Number two, you have to keep your utilities on. Number three, you have to keep your house payment paid. Number four, you have to have transportation to get to and from work. In most cases, unless you're doing remote jobs, then that can vary, but I digress on that one. So why do we say one is food, two is utilities, three is house, four is transportation? Well, number one, if you've got food in your cupboards, you're gonna live to fight another day, quite literally. Number two, if your utilities are on, you're probably not going to be running into problems with your rent. And if you do, now we start looking at who can take the action first. Your utilities will be turned off before your rent or your mortgage company evicts you. That's the reason why utilities come before house payment. Transportation is before everything else because you have to be able to go earn income. If you can do it from your laptop, fine. Number four might not apply to you and that's not a big deal. Understanding number one, no matter what time of the year it is, number one is food, number two is utilities, number three is house payment, number four is transportation. If you have money left over after those, make a list of the most pressing things. But remember, nothing takes precedence over one to four, which is your livelihood. Number four on this is being honest with the ones that are close to you, both family and friends. Something like, hey guys, this year's Christmas might be a little bit smaller than years in the past. On top of that, 
Hey friend, I'm sorry I wasn't able to budget in this social event, whatever it might be, fill in the blank. There's nothing wrong with that. And you don't owe anybody an explanation about your finances. People get the right to speak on behalf of your finances to the extent that they're writing a check. If they're not paying your bills, they don't get to say so. And if they think it's appropriate to give you a guilt trip, you need to think it's appropriate to walk away. You owe nobody in your life a financial explanation for what you're doing to the extent that they're not writing checks in your life. If your rent is paid, your food's on your table, your utilities are on, and you're staying current on things, and you're not going down and asking a bunch of people for handouts, it is nobody else's business what you're doing with your money. Please hear me this time of year especially. There's nothing wrong with, I didn't budget that in for this time. I'm sorry. And they can move on. Number five, putting together a plan that we don't have to find ourselves here again in the future. What does this look like? Number one, if you don't have a thousand bucks in savings, start with that. One thousand dollars in savings will let you be able to kind of breathe a little bit. It's not going to change everything. Thousand bucks will help catch small stuff. Maybe a set of tires if you didn't plan for that. An alternator, a battery, a furnace checkup this year. Small stuff like that. Then we start knocking out debt. Why do we knock out debt? Everybody seems to think debt is such a good thing in this country. It is not. Debt is stealing your income. Picture how much, what, what you could actually do with your income if all you paid was food, utilities, house payment, and you had a paid for car. What could you do with your income? You could save, you could invest, and you could start making progress. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking control of your finances so you get to decide what you do with your finances. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Number one, we start with a thousand bucks in savings. If you make less than $20,000 a year, start with 500. I don't care. Start with something. Get money in savings and then start knocking out debts, smallest to largest. It's called the debt snowball. You do smallest because we have to understand how we as people operate. We are emotional. Have you ever played Candy, played Candy Crush? They give you dopamine hits constantly. Every time you play it, they're constantly hitting you with, good job, good job, good job, good job, and you wanna play. That's the reason why the debt snowball works. There's a lot of other debt systems in place, and most of them do it based upon interest. Here's the math. If you were doing math to start with, you wouldn't have credit cards at 28% interest. It's not hard. The math isn't the problem. We, people, are the problem. So we need to understand how finances work. So number one, we take control by telling those that we love around us, it's gonna be a tight time this year, guys. I didn't take a poll. I'm telling you that's what's gonna happen because of my finances. No is a complete sentence. So if we start with that, we can then build. And if we do these things for the next 12 months, you will not find yourself here next year. You'll have money in savings, you'll have debt, you'll have less debt, and you'll have a much more enjoyable time this year. But the choice is up to you. Hey guys, I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas. Um, I will probably do a couple more videos before then, um, but I hope you guys got some value from this. Please keep in mind, it's your money. You get to control what happens. And remember one, two, three, and four, food, utilities, house payment, transportation. I hope you guys are able to do great things this year, whether it's with money or without money, but spend time with your families. I hope you guys have a great season. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye.